Uh, I've been interested in the whole area of energy fields literally for decades, but it's only in the last few years that I really boil it down to a level where, okay, I've figured out now how this can be turned into a for real science with actual numbers and, and actually get published in mainstream scientific journals. And the first paper, uh, which hopefully will be the first of a long series, uh, has been accepted uh, and has been published <clears throat> in a, one of the journals of the American Anthropological Association. It's called Anthropology of Consciousness. And it's gone through the normal peer review kind of scientific analysis process. And it's uh, presenting actual data from having the electrode just in front of my eye in the goggles that are insulated with tinfoil to keep out the background noise. And it's comparing that signal, which is you know, this far away from my eyes and it's not making physical contact with my eyelids or anything to another electrode that's just on my forehead. So it's normal sort of brainwave electrode EEG type analysis. And it's showing the difference between uh, in the different frequency bands, which is starts off at a low, which is delta, and then there's theta and alpha and beta. Those are just different frequency levels. And the amplitude is how strong the signal is, how big it looks on the screen when you look at the wave. And the amplitude is different depending on whether your eyes are open or closed, both here and in the eye beam. Uh, and the differences aren't exactly the same. So the properties of the eye beam are a little different from the properties of the field coming out through your skull. And the properties here would be different from back here, so that's not unusual. And what it shows is, first of all, there is a signal. You can pick it up. You can measure it scientifically. It's hard numbers. And it's physiologically active. It's not just some sort of noise. It's actually varying with the state of your brain as the general signal coming through your skull does. And uh, so this is step number one in a, in a whole series of projects that I want to try and initiate. It's all about the sense of being stared at. The idea that I feel somebody staring at me, I turn around, I look right at them, they look right at me, we share a look of recognition, and everybody almost has had that experience. According to Western science though, absolutely impossible. It's just random coincidence. No energy of any kind is allowed to come out of your eye. And Western science is absolutely like locked down on this. Because there's two theories of vision. One is the theory of intromission, where light goes into your eye, hits your retina, goes back into your brain, which obviously is true and obviously is going on. The other is the theory of extromission, which goes way back into the ancient world, and that is that some kind of energy comes out of your eye and interacts with the outside world. And that's what's disallowed. So since that's not allowed, there's no possibility of picking up somebody staring at you. And I basically said to myself, wait a minute, number one, I've had the experience, Lots of people have had the experience. It sure seems real. And then thinking, well, okay, what kind of energy could that be? And finally I figured out, well, there's a type of energy that does come out through your skull. That's your brain waves. So if your brain waves come out through your skull, why on earth would they not come out through your eye? Of course they would. And since they don't have to come out through your skull, they're likely to be a little bit stronger just because your skull is going to absorb some of the signal. Maybe because of the shape of your skull, Maybe because there's this big nerve cable right there, your optic nerve, and maybe because of conscious attention and focusing. For all those reasons, maybe the signal's a little stronger, which it turns out it is. But at very low frequencies, such as 0 to 60 hertz, which is a hertz is one cycle per second, which is the level that brain waves are measured at, down at that ELF level, it, the signal doesn't drop off with distance at all. In fact, at a thousand kilometers, there's literally very little drop off in the signal. So it's absolutely scientifically possible that this energy could go out into the world quite a long distance, interact with things out there and in a way that can be measured. And when you think of it for a second, well, wait a minute. If an astronaut on the moon can maintain radio communication with the Earth, why the heck can't your brain waves go 30 feet out in the world and be felt by somebody else? So as soon as you switch it out of kind of the mystical outside science paranormal compartment into the hold on, this is just another electromagnetic signal. It's kind of like a cell phone signal. It becomes normal, scientific, testable, measurable. So then what I want to do from here is uh, talk about it kind of philosophically. So in the anthropology paper, I talk about here's a nice example of 
something that's in anthropology as a belief, and we study how it's transmitted in different cultures and the different forms it takes in different cultures and all the superstitions about it, but we assume there's no reality at the core of it. Actually, in fact, there is. And now we can do this series of experiments and find out, oh, is it possible to have a really sensitive electrode 30 feet away that can tell when I'm staring at it, which I guarantee it will be. Uh, a bunch of uh, electrical engineers at the University of Surrey in England already have published papers where they're taking an EKG from three feet away. Absolutely normal, one that you would see in a hospital. And once you can do it three feet away, you just have to get a little bit more sensitive software and electrode and you can do it six feet away. If you can do it six feet away, you can do it 20 feet away. And if you can do it with the heart signal, you can do it with the brain signal. This would just be one example of many, many, many beliefs of primitive cultures, superstitious beliefs, that science has discarded. Hey, wait a minute, there might be something to this. Maybe if there's like a bad energy in a rock, okay, that doesn't mean that the rock's going to jump out and beat you up. But maybe the electromagnetic field that comes out of the rock can actually be sensed and picked up by a person. Maybe talking about the Earth Mother isn't just superstition. Maybe the electromagnetic field of the whole Earth is part of the environment that we've involved in for a billion years. Maybe actually being in touch with nature literally means being plugged into the electromagnetic field of the Earth. Maybe when we're out of touch with nature, we've actually gotten disconnected. We're so surrounded by electromagnetic pollution in cities that there's literally like a physics unplugging from the electromagnetic field of the Earth. And maybe that results in our feeling empty and spiritually disconnected. So instead of just being a debate in philosophy, this now becomes something you could actually study. Because you could measure the electromagnetic field of the whole body in a city environment, and then in Sedona, Arizona, or you know, some uh, sacred ground of the Indians, and see does the electromagnetic field of the body actually change and adjust to the field of the surrounding environment. So that's kind of the anthropology side of it. My patent application is if, uh, which is already in process and is up on the US Patent Office webpage, if you have an electrode over here, whether it's five feet or 20 feet, and it's sensing the general field that comes out through your skull, and then if I turn and look directly at the electrode, if the software can sense the difference in signal, because the I beam signal is a little stronger, as long as there's enough of a gap and the software is sensitive enough, that's an on-off switch because the software will be able to tell when you are looking at it and when you aren't looking at it. Once that's developed, that switch could be connected to any electrical device on the planet. So here we have a primitive superstition that's impossible scientifically. People think they can tell somebody's staring at them. We just laugh it off as scientists. I've turned that into just like a clapper light, except instead of sound, it's an electromagnetic signal, which is absolutely no different from going and your garage door opens, or going and somebody answers the phone on the other side of the country. It's absolutely a scientific. So that's the, the number one paper in this series of steps.